It's difficult to describe what I, what I do in few words, and for me it's kind of falling apart this idea that I can explain uh, who am I in just this kind of, of way. So I'm going to leave that aside. It's a bit difficult to describe who I am and what I do in a short period of time. So I'm going to leave that aside. It's a bit difficult to describe who I am and what I do in a short period of time. So I'm going to leave that aside. I've been concerned about what kind of competencies, what kind of faculties we need to deal with the world we have today. And I think we all, it's kind of getting uh, more or easier to, to agree that we are living a lot of problematic situations and kind of collapses in many different ways around us. But I think the most visible ones, if we want to talk about like symptoms or problems that we are facing, is like there's three main separations that we experience on a regular basis. The first one that was very present uh, a bit in the first uh, plenary of this afternoon is a separation between us and nature. And I think a big, a big a, a number that we can put on that is one and a half. We are consuming more than one and a half planets, and we only have one per year. And there's, there's, yeah, this, this. So we are, we are going beyond the capacity of the planet to regenerate, to keep a system that regenerates itself. The other one that is also another symptom of, sep of a separation is the separation between each other, the narrative of us and them. Entre nós e os outros, não é? I think that's very visible in many different parts of the world, like in the States, but also in, in many of our, of, of our places in Europe also. Now, the, the last one that is maybe not so, less, not so much talked about is a separation within ourselves. The idea that we are, uh, many of us, separated from our true gifts and our true uh, essence because we are forced on a daily basis to show up as something else, either in work or in different places of our society. A separação de nós mesmos, com as nossas capacidades e com a nossa essência, de forma que podemos integrar-nos no nosso trabalho e na nossa sociedade. Uh, uh, there's a very uh, shock, shocking uh, um, uh, data, for instance, in 2010, not so much, not so long ago, I think maybe now it's even worse, but in 2010, more people in the planet committed suicide than those who, were, those who died from violent crimes, wars, and natural disasters. Guerras e acidentes naturais e, e desastres naturais. So it's really shocking. More people decided to put an end in their lives than those who were uh, dead in unpredictable uh, situations. É chocante o facto de haver mais pessoas a decidirem por um fim à sua própria vida do que aquelas que morreram por situações. So this is what the age of echo has brought to, of ego has brought to us, somehow, in the middle of all the material benefits that it brought. Uh, and it's that we are in this era of the ego, which brought us many benefits of the material, but also brought us all this idea of separation. So I'm, I'm going to talk about how this idea of separation is separation. So I'm going to talk about how 
many people around the world are, are envisioning a, a transition from ego to echo. And perhaps the most important thing is to say that this that I just talked to you about is just the symptoms. If you look in terms of an iceberg, it's just what is on the surface, what we are seeing. If you want to really go into what is the real problem, what is the cause that is, that is uh, provoking all these symptoms, we need to dive a bit, a bit deeper. And of course, if we go below the water, the first thing we face is structures. We have structures in place that perpetuate these symptoms. So, for instance, I hear in a lot of these places people talk about money and that we only need to cure our relationship with money and that we need to attract money. But the structure, the way money is designed, the architecture of money as we have it today, is causing more and more inequality. So is, is money, is, the way it is designed is problematic. Não, deixa me só dizer uma coisa, desculpa, que é, não, não é, uh, uh, hoje em dia fala-se muito nestes espaços que o que nós temos que fazer é, é curar a nossa relação com o dinheiro, porque o dinheiro em si não é um problema, é a nossa relação com ele que é um problema. E eu estou a desafiar isso porque eu, uh, eu tenho o meu background de economia, só para, my background is economics, uh, da, a arquitetura do dinheiro, como ela é, é que está hoje montada, ela leva a uma maior, cada vez maior desigualdade. E, portanto, o dinheiro é problemático, não é a nossa relação com o dinheiro que é problemática. A nossa pode ser também, mas não é só a única, a única fonte de problemas. So, we, but then, this is, not the, this is just below the water, this is not the real cause. Mas isto é somente debaixo da água, não é realmente a verdadeira The real cause is actually much more uh, shocking, maybe, for many of us than we would like. A verdadeira causa é, na realidade, muito mais chocante para alguns de nós because it's li it lies inside, in between our ears. <laughs> it's in our head. It's in the way we see the world and the stories we tell about how the world works and how it should work. So the first thing is to come to terms with the, f with the possibility that perhaps many of our belief systems are fundamentally wrong. Because we grow up in an age of separation, with narratives of separation. And so, uh, if the, 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 in many, many fields of science is becoming more and more clear this idea that has been also mentioned many times in this, in this event, that we are all interconnected and there's no real separation between each other and between us and the natural world. We are all the same. <coughs> Better than say we are all the same, we are all a manifestation of a whole. Ok? Somos todos, a melhor uma forma de dizer isso é que nós somos um, todos uma manifestação particular de um todo. And we can talk about the, the whole of the planet Earth, but we can also talk about the whole of the planet, uh, of the solar system, or the universe. Yeah? Now, there's a long path to take in order for us to unlearn what we have learned and to decolonize ourselves and, and create space for new ideas about what it means to live in a world that is really interconnected. So I just want to give you a clues or tips about what I feel is fundament the fundamental faculties for each one of us to start that path, individually and collectively. 
começar o caminho para desenvolver as faculdades que precisamos. To move from ego to echo. Yeah? Para nos movermos do ego para o echo. The first one is to think that perhaps the way we are listening and the way we are talking is not serving us anymore. Or is not serving us. So the first thing is how we, when we are engaging in a conversation with each other or even inside ourselves, how we keep a mind of curiosity, a, a curious mind, and a curious state. Many of us spend most of the time trying to confirm what we already know. <laughs> and so we go out of a conversation and we say, I knew it. I was right from all along, you know, that person told me exactly the same thing. We are always looking for confirming what we already know. So imagine like you are a dot and your, the whole things you know is like a, a, a circumference around that dot, so you keep in the center. You don't move when you have this kind of, of habit of just confirming what you already know. Because you're just like, it's like you're, you're at home and all your curtains are down. That's what you see, it's your little world. So to keep an open mind and curiosity is like to be able to go out of the center, go to the edge and just look around and see like, what do you mean? What's, what, what do you think about this? What do you think about this? And I say that not even in conversation, but also in the way we observe the, the nature around us and the natural phenomena, because most of the times we actually project our own ideas of what it is than actually really seeing the phenomena as they are. I'm having short time, so I'll have to accelerate a bit. But just to mention, Darwin had a book where he all the time, although he's accused of being dogmatic, actually he was not. He had a book where he wrote all the time things that he discovered that disconfirmed his own beliefs. So I think that's the kind of attitude we need to have. Escrevia tudo o que desconfirmava aquilo que ele, que ele acreditava, as convicções dele. So the second big faculty is uh, empathy and compassion. So it's not about arguing which one is right, but it's actually trying to understand the other and putting ourselves in the shoes of the other person. So, in often in, this, in discussions, when someone attacks our opinion, we feel like it is attacking us. It's like our opinion is us. Is our, let's, let's say that my opinion is my jacket, so you, you are, I'm with my jacket on and you are attacking me. You know, you are like, so if you really want to understand deeper an issue in a talk with another person, you need to take off that jacket and go and sit on the other place, on the other place. So just a very extreme example, imagine that me as a man stand up here and say the place of woman is in the kitchen. I can imagine that most of you will react in a very defensive way of saying, oh, you are wrong and justifying all sorts of things. But perhaps what I'm inviting is that you ask, like, but why do you think like that? What made you think in that way? Now the last faculty that is really fundamental 
together with these two that I mentioned, curiosity and uh, compassion. <coughs> is that we are living a moment in history that we don't have a clue what's going to happen next. <coughs> Nobody would ever thought that we'd have Brexit, that we'd have Trump. I mean, all sorts of things are happening that are really putting us in a very uncertain space. But often in our lives also we have that unknown present because we know some things are not working anymore but we are blocked by the fear of jumping into the unknown so we get stuck. So Maria just mentioned what we need. We need courage. We need the courage to take that leap and to follow our, insti our intuition, our instincts, and to move to a future that we want to bring to life that perhaps serves us best. And that, that needs to, that we take that risk. Uh, a Maria já tinha falado que na coragem, e a coragem é a última faculdade que eu, que eu queria mencionar, porque nós precisamos dela para sermos capazes de assumir riscos e de seguir a nossa intuição, os nossos instintos e ir saltar para o desconhecido quando sentimos que aquilo que nós estamos a fazer já não nos está a servir. E ficamos presos a isso só por medo. So that's it. There's, a, there's many, many ways that we can work with this. I think this is something that we need to work individually because the impacts of what we do depend on our inner conditions and then dependem das condições interiores de onde nós agimos and we need to do this collectively by engaging in conversations that are uh, meaningful for us and where we bring our vulnerabilities and our authenticity so that you can move from ego to echo and start to have uh, really meaningful conversations about what really matters to us today. Thank you.